puffins, the gulls. Everybody thinks of gulls as seabirds. They're coastal, but they are found around the oceans. Terns, the penguins, of course, and the petrels and the albatrosses. All of these are types of seabirds, but they're not necessarily closely related to one another. It's just that they have all adapted to exploit the marine environment. They all share the ability to make their living at sea. I think it says something about us as land mammals that we make the distinction between birds and seabirds. When you see a sparrow fly across the back of your garden or something, you don't call that a land bird, do you? <laughs> the land part is just implied. Of course it's a, you know, it's a land bird. That's where we live. But the ocean is different. It's weird. And so for us, if there's a bird that lives there, it needs that specialty notion of being a seabird. Now, these are the only Latin terms that you're going to get in this talk, so don't be afraid. But the groups of birds that I just mentioned, the pelicans and puffins, etc., not all of those are found in the southern ocean around Antarctica and southern South America. The only types we find in these waters are in these four groups here, the penguins, the albatrosses and petrels, that big group in the middle there. Then there's the cormorants in a separate group and a sort of catch-all group called the Chiratriformes, the gulls and the skuas and the terns, etc. So just those four have representatives in the deep south. The environment that they're living in is really unusual. Here's a map of Antarctica seen from above the South Pole. And at the bottom right, you'll see South America peeking in. And at the top sort of center is where New Zealand is. And you'll see some squiggly lines cutting around the ocean there. That first one, the southerly one, is known as the Antarctic Convergence, or the Polar Front. And this is an oceanographic boundary, a place where the relatively colder water south of that line bumps into, but doesn't really mingle with, the warmer water to the north. And this is a biological barrier for many organisms. It changes. Uh, whether the life that you find in the ocean changes whether you're on the north side or the south side of this polar front. And north, there's another oceanographic boundary. This is called the subtropical convergence. And again, colder water to the south, meaning but not really mixing with the warmer water to the north. I'd also like to take a moment to point out a feature that will play a lot to do with our itinerary and what we're going to do in the coming days because from this perspective you can see the only place in the world where an ocean current can go all the way around the globe, 360 degrees of longitude, is there between the gap between Antarctica and South America. And because there is no land getting in the way here, we have a circumpolar current which has a lot of impact on what can live here, how food is distributed, but it also affects things like wave height and the weather that we'll encounter. Now, going back to sea surface temperature, that's what we're looking at in this diagram here. And as you would imagine, the warmer colors like reds and yellows, oranges, those are warmer sea temperatures. And the cooler blues and violets are the colder temperatures. And especially down near the bottom of South America, you can see they're very clearly delineated. There are zones, and the colder water is further away from the equator. And cold water can be very productive biologically. It seems kind of uh, against logic that the tropical waters, where they're nice and warm, are not as productive as the temperate and polar waters, but it's because of a simple physical property, which is the ability of a cold water to hold more dissolved gas in it. And I'm using these beverages here in the photo to show you, because you all know this principle whether you put it all together or not. A warm beer or a warm Coca-Cola, when you open it, it has a much bigger head on it. It froths up a lot because that liquid, the water that's part of that beverage, can't hold all of that dissolved gas 
in solution. A colder beer can, and a colder ocean can, and the more dissolved gas you've got in 